There are more than 6 million CCTV cameras in the UK, more per head than any other country on the planet. Computer Constable 5 1 Mel. Operating 24 7, these cameras are becoming increasingly important in catching criminals in the act. Armed robbery, street brawls, anti-social behaviour to really dangerous behaviour. All caught on camera. I'm Nick Wallace. I've been reporting on crime for more than a decade. I'm going onto the front line to see how CCTV is helping police put criminals behind bars. Tonight, the criminals who make their money from nicking yours. Why have you run from police? Opportunist thieves who, given half a chance, will steal anything they can get their hands on. And the cash machine scammers who can empty your bank account in a matter of hours. Almost everyone's been a victim of theft. It's upsetting to go through, and the fact is, the problem's getting worse. While most crime is falling, theft remains on the increase. In fact, nearly two million thefts were reported last year. There he grabs the victim's bag. If it's not nailed down, there's always someone prepared to nick it. But CCTV is helping catch opportunist thieves who think it's OK to steal, often spotting crimes before the victim has any idea they've been robbed. How bold and beautiful is that? And helping police catch thieves red-handed. More than 10,000 bikes are nicked every month, and some are worth serious money. So the trade in stolen bikes is booming. As cycling becomes more popular, there are more opportunities for bike thieves. And the historic city of Chester is no exception. It's seen a dramatic rise in stolen bikes. But CCTV is helping catch the thieves in the act. Whiskey Zulu 29BA. CCTV operator Paul Hunt knows the bike theft hotspots. Some shifts are busier than others. One of the hardest parts of being a CCTV operator is um, remaining focused. At any time, anything can happen. And if you're not focused and concentrating and alert, then you may miss the, you know, the incident. Most thieves will strike under the cover of darkness, and Paul knows it. Paul spots two suspicious figures at one of the bike stands. Camera control to um, police. We're just watching two males uh, snapping the lock off a bike which is chained up. The thieves have got no idea they're being watched or that Paul's called the cops. It's quite easy to snap a lock off a bike and it's surprising the amount of people will have a, a two or three thousand pound bike and then they'll invest in a ten pound lock to secure it and it will be pinched. It's midnight. With the stolen bike in their hands, the thieves toast their success. I would have thought they'd just been on a night out in the city. Um, they've crossed the road now and they're just outside the news agents on Fourgate Street. They're actually talking to some people sat in a bus stand there and they've still got the bike with them and they have snapped the lock off. The brazen pair are keen to show off their new wheels, not realising the police are about to break up their little party. So police have arrived, uh, they've got the two males and the bike, although they don't look too happy to have been detained. Getting your bike nicked doesn't just mean you'll be walking home. It hits most of us where it hurts, in the pocket. The trade in stolen bikes runs into big money, so up and down the country, police regularly clamp down. Chester police have set up a special operation to catch the thieves, using bikes as bait. Detective Constable Nigel Thake is in charge. 2975, Steve. Yeah, bring the bikes down, mate. DC Thake's team has two expensive bikes. The bikes are locked up. Now all they have to do is watch and wait. We've got uh, windows here which we can see out of, but uh, luckily they can't see in here. So it's a prime location for us to be doing observations. 
and not only that, we've got officers standing by in different locations who I will call upon should the person come along and try and steal the bike. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens now and see who comes down and uh, hopefully they go for the bait. The Sting has a secret weapon, live cameras. In CCTV control, Paul is ready to catch any criminal in the act. We're currently monitoring the bike stands um, outside, just on Victoria Road. Uh, and let's see if we find anything. Four hours into the operation, the streets are still deserted. But then Paul notices someone lurking in the shadows. OK, so we've just spotted two chaps that have turned up um, and they're loitering near to the bike stands. They appear to be paying attention to one of the bikes that's secured there. And so I'm just going to alert my colleagues in the place that that's happening. Camera control 5-1, um, we've got two males uh, just by the bike stand. Is your camera good enough to get up uh, a clothing description or facial? He's wearing a, a black tracksuit uh, with uh, white stripes down the legs. He's also got a baseball cap on. The second male, it's got the letters across the chest in white saying UCLA. Uh, both white males in their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, they're just stood adjacent to the bike stands now. The cops can't spring the trap until a crime's been committed. Stand by, stand by. Yeah, we've got some interest lads in the bike, stand by. They appear to be watching people um, and waiting for an opportune moment. Very suspicious. Yeah, I think we're definitely on here, lads. They're just waiting for people to move out of the way. Yeah, there's just too much foot pedestrians at the moment. There's nobody in the area, and one of the males is approaching the bike. Looking at the silver one. OK, they're going for the silver one. Stand by. They're moving out, moving out. Yep, they forced the lock. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. With the cops moving full tilt, Paul stays sharp. Camera control to 5-1. Keeping the thieves in his sight. Uh, currently heading away from Victoria Road in the general direction of St Anne Street. Here's the police. Um, there we go. Got him. Keep your hands where they are. Both of you under arrest. The man is searched. He's carrying a packet of needles. His motives becoming clear. There's a lock there and lock there. I just. That's the bike there, and I pulled it, both my hands. OK, it's very honest of you. I know. Oh, there's no point, I've just been caught red-handed, you know what I mean? <laughs> just need money for drugs, so pinched it. And I thought, easy to get, so... With the theft caught on camera, it's a successful night for Paul and the police. We're always looking out for these people, and it's really good when we get somebody who has stolen a bike. It's a good job for us. Right, job done. It's a, a very good stop for us. Coming up, a gang of pickpockets show no mercy. Oh, there we go. The cash point scammers robbing us blind. His card is gone. It's obviously not the first time he's done it, shall we say. And one thief gets caught red-handed. <laughs> Across the country, some criminals think they can get away with daylight robbery. Pickpockets, bag snatchers and cash point scammers are amongst the most brazen opportunist thieves. They pride themselves on their ability to go undetected. Whilst it can often be a game of cat and mouse with the cops on the ground, it's not so easy to hide from cameras that have a bird's eye view. The person with that bird's eye view is CCTV operator Paul Hunt, who's on the day shift. Looking over a packed city centre. The shoppers are out and so are the tourists, but some visitors don't always come to enjoy the sights. We've just been asked by British Transport Police to keep a, a, a camera 
or an eye on five males believed to be Eastern European. Um, they've got off the train that's come from Northern Ireland um, over on the ferry to Hollerhead. Um, so we picked up on them. They do seem to be wandering around aimlessly and we're going to continue monitoring them in case something happens. Paul's been an operator for more than 10 years and knows exactly what he's looking for. People who have got something to hide tend to look suspicious, I'd say. Certainly causing me some concern. They appear to be watching what other people are looking at. If you just look around looking in the shops, looking at shopping and generally minding your own business, you'll tend not to be, to be watching what other people are doing. Now, people who've got something to hide, uh, they always look shifty. The gang have been in the city centre for just over half an hour. They don't seem to realise that their every move is being watched and recorded. Now they're just approaching an old lady. Um, oh, there we go, one of them is actually going for a purse. Camera control to any 5 1. We've just observed uh, a male purse dipping an elderly lady uh, just on the cross and going on to Northgate Street. Anybody to respond? Over. Uh, males are now just passing the front of Curry's and PC World. It should be easy enough to spot. Five males, all Eastern European, uh, predominantly wearing dark clothing and woolen hats. Camera control 5 1, that is the five males in front of you. Over. The pickpockets are arrested. Without CCTV, they would have got away with it. Paul now wants to find the victim so the police can return her property. It could prove difficult for us to find a single person in this city, especially an elderly lady. There's lots of people about, um, but we're going to give it a go, and with a little bit of luck and some skill, uh, we'll be able to, to we'll be able to find her, um, and then direct police to her. Camera control 5-1, uh, I think we've got the lady um, who was involved in the earlier incident with the purse dipping. She's currently just opposite um, WH Smith's, near to the clock, over. It's very satisfying when we have a, a job um, where you get some real criminals arrested. Um, you know, I'll go home, we're quite, quite happy today. Being caught on camera is a criminal's worst nightmare. But it's not just street cameras they've got to worry about. Nowadays, there isn't a bar, pub, club or a cafe that doesn't have its own CCTV. In fact, there are three times more private CCTV cameras than public ones. So for those criminals who think they can make a quick buck by stealing other people's stuff, chances are someone somewhere will be watching them. And that footage could put them behind bars. Getting your phone, bag or wallet snatched is the crime you're most likely to be victim of. More than 100,000 of us were hit like this last year, and this type of crime is on the rise. These thieves are sly. You can't always see what they're up to at ground level, but cameras catch it all. This is the home of the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Thousands come here every day, not expecting to have a central role in their very own crime drama. Watch closely. The pickpocket is sneaking his hand into someone else's bag. 
He doesn't get lucky first time, but you can see his technique. He covers his hand with a hat and goes for the dip. He's back, going in again with his hand under his hat. He unzips the bag, waits, and as she's putting on her coat, he makes a second move. But this time, he's caught in the act. The victim isn't happy. Her friends surround the man. Amazingly, he denies it. And eventually, still playing the innocent, he legs it. The man in the white hat looks like a tourist, but he's only here to look for vulnerable people with big wallets. Holding the hand of his accomplice and with his hat now removed, he spots a target. And carefully unzips the man's bag. That's the first part of the manoeuvre. Five minutes later in the next room, he makes his second move. As the man tries on Dr. Watson's hat, the pickpocket slips away with his prize. With his baseball cap back on, it looks like the man's trying to escape undetected. But the Sherlock Holmes Museum camera system has been following him. The police arrive just in time. They arrest the pickpocket and his accomplice. Case closed. Elementary. When a thief makes off with your bag or wallet, the one thing they want more than anything is your hard-earned cash. But what they actually end up with can be a bit hit or miss. The one place they know you'll have big bucks is at the cash point, and that's where you'll find a new breed of sneak thief. And this kind of robbery is on the increase, trebling in the last year alone. But CCTV is helping catch the thieves in the act. One man determined to put a stop to this crime is PC Mark Naylor. His beat covers one of the most expensive parts of London. How are we doing? You well? Yeah, I'm good. How's it going? Not bad. Keeping well? He's got his gloves on already. It's only a little bit colder. Mark's on the lookout for a particular type of cash machine scammer, the shoulder surfer. We got people who deceive you at a cash point, maybe throw some money on the floor and say, have you dropped that £10? You dip down to pick up the £10 note. They've either had the money being dispensed or your card or both. I don't know, maybe an old romantic, but I don't like people being stolen from, I don't like people being deceived. Shoulder surfers often work in pairs. One distracts the victim, on this occasion with a banknote, whilst the other reaches in, stealing the freshly dispensed cash. It's quick and it's easily missed. Look again. As the victim's back is turned, the criminal reaches in, swiping the cash. And the victim is left waiting for his money to appear. These guys are brazen and ruthless, but where there's a cash point, there's a camera. And every withdrawal is logged by the bank's computers. The, the good thing about ATM transactions is they are recorded to the very second. So I can go to these places and say, I need the cameras for 11 minutes past 12 and, and 38 seconds. I need five minutes either side. Let's see who we get. Evidentially, CCTV for the ATMs is massive. There's a shoulder surfer who's been persistently stealing at cash points across London for months. 
I've got many, many discs here. I've got over 12 discs and I've watched all of them and he does the same thing to lots of different people. I hate to give these people credit, um, but then when you sit down and watch it, they are very good. From the wealth of video evidence, Mark's building a picture of the offender and his methods. One clip shows exactly what he's up to. Our friend is using the machine, or supposedly using the machine. Now, there is our victim. As you can see, he's a very well-dressed elderly gentleman. Now, he's approached the victim there. As you can see, he's got his hand up where the card slot would be. Now, his card is gone. And I had to watch that four times before I could see where he actually did it. You have to slow it right down and you can see it. The sharp-eyed thief peers over his victim's shoulder to read his pin. The criminal butts in, claiming the machine is swallowing cards and waving his own about. And he has a partner in crime who helps with the distraction. In the confusion, he reaches over, covering the keypad with a wallet. This is the moment he presses cancel and swipes the card. The victim is left believing his bank's at fault. The gentleman was so convinced he actually went back to the bank the next day at nine o'clock when it opened and said, can I have my car back, please? Your machine's eaten my card. Well, of course, it hadn't. Our friend had taken it. And um, in those intervening, I think, 12 hours, had taken 1,100 pounds off him. It's obviously not the first time he's done it, shall we say. The CCTV evidence will put a stop to these two shoulder surfers. We've had, to date, I think 18 idents on the same suspect and his accomplice. I've got a really good positive outcome, or I will have. So, yeah, it's nice. The good guys win at last. <laughs> Coming up, Friday night in London and the phone snatchers are out. Why have you run from police? And the prolific thief who bagged himself a fortune's worth of designer gear. Friday night is one of the busiest nights of the week and when CCTV operators in the capital need to be at their most vigilant. With the number of street thefts on the rise, these guys can't take their eye off the ball for a moment. Did a constable five one melt? There's a new crime that's plaguing the high street. It's become so common, it's got its own name, apple picking. Fast-moving phone snatchers who are after expensive mobiles. In London, more than 10,000 phones are stolen every month. And it happens in a flash. Most of them come at you on a bike. These thieves use speed and surprise and it's hard to catch them in the act. But with the help of CCTV, the police are tracking them down. This is South London's Central Communications Command, where emergency calls come in. Using live feeds from across the district, dispatch Sergeant Viv Brownlee can help officers respond on the ground. Her shift's only just begun, but already, She's dealt with a spate of phone thefts. Earlier on, I think there were about five robberies, and then think, I think since about um, seven o'clock, um, there's been another, another three robberies, all with a similar MO, and just basically cycling past people and grabbing their phones. Sharing the night shift is Sergeant Dave Fielding. But you know, people have got to be people, it's, especially in certain areas. People have got to be careful what they what they're waving around in the hands because you know it's 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 it, especially after a few drinks they, they they do stick out as an easy target. Cameras give police control centre a direct link to officers on the ground. Sergeant Andy Scott and PC Andy Stevens are a specialist robbery squad. If you have an operator who's got good local knowledge, they will. Uh, look at the camera, they'll know exactly the direction of travel someone's going, so um, they'll understand the roads they're leading into, and they can often deploy police units, tell them which place to go to in order to um, 
successfully apprehend the suspect. In London, a phone is snatched every five minutes. The shift has barely started, and already eight phones have been stolen. And another has just been reported. Is that one of mine or yours? The control room have seen a suspect on a bike. CCTV is tracking him. Have we got any uh, robbery cars in our channel, chaps? There's a robbery on the um, on the south of the borough. Just confirm suspect description. Confirm on bike or on foot. The IT3 male, the black cat, on a French bike. We do have a good we do have a good link with CCTV around here. Whilst control monitors the possible suspect, the team head to the scene of the crime. Basically, we've got um, a possible sight of the suspect, albeit that's uh, far south of the venue. What cameras uh, focus on them, the wiggle the units go to the scene, we're going to pick up the victim and we're going to do a drive round. Would you recognise him again? Yeah, you can see his face. You yeah. see his face? Yeah. Would you like to come out of us? You come out of the back of the car? We're going to see if we can find him? Yeah, go on. In a case like this, speed is everything. A second robbery team is called into action. From the control room, Viv directs the second robbery team to a suspect a few streets away. PCs Dave Skiffington and Dave Wilson have years of experience dealing with suspects on the ground. Come here. Wait, just wait a second. Who's on the bikes? Who's on the bikes? Not mine, not the Tell me who the bikes belong to. I don't know. It's not mine. Huh? It's not mine. Do we seize the bikes then? I'll what, you want. What, uh, what was the description, sorry? Yeah, one, three, they've all legged it back towards um, Liam Court Road. Oh, there's just a few that are on push bikes. Our suspect's on a push bike, so it was just an inquiry. Across the estate, the control room has spotted another potential suspect. Just come out into the light so I can see you. Why have you run from police? I didn't run from police. Why are you, why are you hiding around there then? Yeah. Why is my federal calling me, bro? You're being detained at the moment. There's been a robbery in the area and you run off from police. Yeah, That's why you're being detained, all right? Yeah. A search of the suspect reveals a surprise. But they never said there was... All these phones yours? Huh? Yeah, yeah. All of them? Yeah. How many? Why have you got so many phones in here? What we'll do is we'll check all these phones um, as he's been detained, as he's run from police, bearing in mind a robbery's just taken place. Um, and the fact he's got four different mobile phones on him. Some of them are old, but... One and, uh, one thing. Most people don't carry around old phones. Okay. They generally just carry one or two phones. This suspect has a lot of questions to answer. But the victim doesn't think it's the same person who took her phone. None of the phones are hers, and none of them are reported stolen. They take the victim home and will continue to comb the streets looking for the suspect. This is just one of 300 phones snatched every day on the streets of London. Just sort of normal Friday, um, late turn, really. You can not have a, a good guess it when it's going to be less busy than other times of the day, right, no, I'm not but uh, you never know what's going to happen, you know, especially in a big city like London. Snatching a phone on the street is usually fast and brash. But there are more subtle ways of stealing your phone. Some so subtle, the victims don't even realise it's gone. Watch closely. A woman's enjoying a coffee in a city centre cafe. A man approaches, asking for sponsorship. While she searches for small change, the clipboard is placed on the table. It looks innocent enough, but as he leaves, he's taken more than her money. Look again. The clipboard covers the phone, and when he picks it up, the phone's gone too. The victim might have missed the theft, but the cafe's CCTV didn't. In Manchester, there was a spate of these crimes. As the police analysed the videos, they realised that however subtle the technique, Something about the thief stood out a mile. His shoes, making him very easy to collar. At first he denied it, and then when he was shown on camera, we could say that it's clearly you with them shoes, so he would then admit it. 
Callan Lionel Rostus was found guilty and sent to prison for 20 months. Without CCTV, we wouldn't have been able to convict him of half the offences, although he's very distinctive in his face anyway. I still don't think we would have got as far as we have without the CCTV. If this can happen over a coffee, imagine how much easier it is for criminals when you're on a night out. One thing that goes hand in hand with a Friday night is a drink. It helps us relax and unwind. But it's also when we're most likely to let our guard down, making clubs and bars magnets for bag snatchers. They might know all the tricks, but CCTV is always there to catch them in the act. This couple in a hotel bar weren't looking for a drink, they were on the rob. One swift move and a guest's bag is theirs. Bag snatching has become such a problem in the capital that the City of London Police have set up Operation Spinetail, headed by Detective Sergeant Graham Mace. Right, good evening, chaps. Tonight, centres around theft from licensed premises, cafes and restaurants. Working closely with public and private CCTV, undercover cops are out to catch the bag snatchers. The team are covering some of the most exclusive bars in the city. Uh, have a good one and um, I'll see you out there on the ground. Cheers. Criminals know where there are big earners, there are big spenders. The bags here can be worth a grand, never mind the contents. You get people who don't even realise that they've been evicted. Yeah, I've got one from the same two suspects from that bar. She had it stolen on Friday night and she didn't realise that they had a whole, like, three grand's worth of shopping, which emptied her account. You can go days with nothing, and then you go days when it's just full on all day long. But already, a member of the squad spots someone out of place in one of the flashiest bars in the area. Hello, Mike. You still got him? DS Mace tells his team to hold back, keep an eye on the suspect and track his movements. If he's a thief, they'll be back for the CCTV evidence. I might picked him up. He was looking around at all the uh, bags on the floor. Oh, he's an I, I, I see one, so he's, I was going to go around the back, so he was going towards the old butler's head. Um, I've sent two officers around the front. The man was stopped, but he had nothing on him. Within minutes, the team are on another call. Yeah, the man with the beard is out. Uh, looks like he may have got something underneath his uh, cardigan. He's uh, walking at pace now back up towards Rugby. The city's CCTV cameras have spotted someone acting suspiciously. Is it the one with the uh, hat? Who did the stay thing? there! Stay there! Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Sorry? Have you got anything stolen on you? No. no nothing no, no, stolen. No, Take no, your bag no. off, please, mate. We got the mail with the hat stopped on Newbridge Street opposite the Albion. Is this one, mate? This one. Yeah. You stole it, yeah? No. No? No. no. The bag's his but what's inside doesn't appear to be. Thieves know the bars in the city square mile deliver the richest pickings. 18 months ago, bag theft had got so bad that a special operation was set up to catch the criminals responsible. Night after night, more bags were being stolen. The police weren't sure if this was a gang or the work of just one person. CCTV gave them the answer. As the team started to go through the footage, they noticed a smartly dressed man. Talking on his phone, he hooks a woman's bag with his foot. Then he's off. The team began by analysing CCTV of similar crimes in the area. Sometimes there might only be four or five cameras, sometimes there can be 10 or 12 cameras or even more at certain venues. So we have to take all that and spend a lot of time, a lot of man hours to actually look through this footage 
and um, that's where our expertise comes in. They studied hundreds of hours of footage, then a breakthrough. All of a sudden, there was sort of a bit of a shout come across, this is the same person. The game is on at that point, that we need to catch them before they commit the next crime. They were after just one man. He likes to go into bars that are busy, but not overly busy. He likes to move around, he likes to pick his target, and he will then move in and take it. No matter what's there, he will have it. But you'll see he dresses uh, to fit him with the clientele in the bar, and there he is on his phone pretending to talk, which is his telltale sign that he's about to take the bag. So he's now kicked it far enough away, and you'll see him conceal it now with his rucksack, so nobody can see him walking out with a lady's handbag in his hand. Another breakthrough came when one clip finally put a face to the elusive thief. The team had a face, now they needed a body. Time to set up a sting to catch him. With everyone in place, the operation was on. But it was a no-show. We knew it was just a matter of time, and I was confident that within the first couple of days, we were going to catch him. On the second night, after three hours watching and waiting, he appears. And when the call came over the radio, I could tell with the voice of my colleagues, everybody was quite excited. If he doesn't make a move, the team will have to let him walk. Unaware he's being watched by undercover police and recorded on camera, he cases out the bar. He pulls out his phone and then steps towards an expensive bag. As he leaves the bar, stolen bag in hand, he's arrested. The bag snatcher is 35-year-old Rabbit Azug. The police knew Azug was a thief, but they had no idea of the scale of his crimes. My team went into the, into the flat and uh, they started to search it, and in, in the cupboards they just started finding handbags everywhere. OK, what we've got here are the uh, bags that were actually seized from Mr Azug's flat. Chanel purses, Mark Jacobs' bag, there, DKMY. To put a rough number on it, if we looked at all the bags and with possessions and the matching purses that there was for most of the bags, probably looking at somewhere from anywhere from 150 to 250,000 pounds worth of goods have been stolen. I believe the amount of bags he's having, he probably has been uh, Mr Azug, one of the most prolific thieves across London. Rabba Azug serving two years in prison. He joins the many criminals caught on camera. Coming up, video evidence becomes the third forensic science. There he grabs the victim's bag. And in Chester, one thief can run, but he can't hide. The male's now running off, um, but he's not going to get away from our cameras at the moment. Opportunistic thieves are behind a huge rise in theft, but CCTV is giving police that vital edge when it comes to catching criminals in the act. Just as important is its role after the event. What's caught on camera can provide the clues and the evidence to put criminals where they belong. There are more than six million cameras across the UK. With so much potential evidence, putting names to faces is a monumental task. To identify the criminals, the Met has set up a specialist unit, Vido. It's the first of its kind. Yeah, how bold and beautiful is that? Its aim is to establish CCTV as the third forensic science alongside fingerprints and DNA. Nothing catches a criminal like his mugshot. Without the CCTV, a lot of our crimes wouldn't be further investigated because there's no other forensics. It's like an oracle. What you see is what you get. You can see here, he's looking straight under the table. You see that? That coloration there? That, I would say, is the bag. Today, Vido officers Emma Wilshire and Paddy Regan are on their way to a London pub where a laptop bag was recently stolen. So you put your bag down, be it on a chair next to you or on the floor just by your feet. And unfortunately, if there's someone there who's a bit of an opportunist, then they'll, they'll see it and target them. The victim had no idea how his bag was stolen. 
Okay, here's our victim, as per the description in the crime report. Worse still, the victim had almost two grand in cash in his bag. As we can see, there's the bag. So what we need to do now is quickly review the footage and see if anything obvious happens around the time frame that we've been given in the crime report. Before long, a suspicious figure catches Paddy's eye. OK, what's drawn my attention to this chap is the fact that he's on his mobile phone and it's the way he's sitting with that arm leant towards where the victim's bag is placed. OK, as we can see closely, this gentleman's hand is reaching down to behind where the victim is sitting. And there he grabs the victim's bag. He's now slid it next to him. He's ended his phone conversation. He's going to have a look around to see if anyone's caught him. And he now leaves the pub with the victim's bag. They've found the thief, but still need a clear face shot to help identify him. Paddy and Emma take all the footage back to HQ and hand over to CCTV specialist Dale. Not only did he have his Mac in there, he had nearly 2K of cash in there. Two, really? 2,000 pounds, yeah. Dale starts the trawl. I don't actually see a clear facial image of the suspect. I've got a profile. I'll review it again, just to sort of... Maybe there is a sweet shot that I've missed. But at the moment, it's not suitable for circulation. I'm hoping by continuing to investigate the rest of the CCTV, that a clearer image is available. Flicking through the other cameras, he finds another angle and a better picture of the bag thief. I'm feeling that this character has got some distinctive uh, facial features. His hairline is distinctive, uh, his long sideburns. From looking at the footage, he's got a very long nose. See, look at the size of that nose. The thief's face will be circulated to police across the capital. I've got no reason at all to doubt that a colleague will see this and be able to put a name to this face. Dale's team has already identified more than 5,000 criminals this year. Before, uh, we were just relying on memory of, of an individual as to uh, a sequence of events. But now, it doesn't lie, it just plays it as it is. Cities like Chester are always a prime target for opportunist thieves, especially when it's busy with tourists and shoppers. Another long shift for CCTV operator Paul is almost over. We've just received reports that uh, a male has stolen some stock. Uh, we're watching him at the moment on camera. Uh, stop security are trying to detain him. Giving security the slip, the man makes a break for it. The male's now running off, um, but he's not going to get away from our cameras at the moment. Uh, we're able to track uh, from camera to camera. Whiskey Zulu 29BA. Paul keeps the man in his sights, guiding the cops on the ground towards him. Camera control to any 5 1 in the city can assist us with a stop. We will continue to monitor him. The suspected thief takes shelter behind a tree. As the camera watches, he tries to change his appearance. So the male's now uh, taking his top off. It's a good job he sat down because he's a bit out of breath. He probably doesn't do that much running. He sat down on a bench next to somebody who appears to be busking. He thinks he's got away with, you know, the offences he's committed, but we're watching him. Police are aware of, to where he is. Um, and they'll be with him shortly. The man's trying to blend in with the buskers. But when the cops move in, it's time for him to face the music. There he goes. There's the police that have arrived and the male's being taken into custody uh, for theft. The bike thieves in Chester each got a six-month community order, forcing them off the streets at night. The gang of pickpockets each got five months in prison. And London's prolific bag snatcher won't be anywhere near a bar until 2015. More and more, CCTV is taking the fight to the thieves. And there's nowhere to hide when their crimes are caught on camera.